In the last video, we routed the shoulders for both the binding and the purfling on the instrument. We'll install those in this video. You can use a plastic binding if you like. I prefer a wood binding. It just uh, it appeals to me. Um, I've bent some binding that matches my rosette right now. I've just uh, pre-bent it to make it easier to do. Uh, at this time you don't have to do that, but it does make your life a lot easier. Uh, but before I go and start installing it, I still have a little bit of uh, preparation to do on here, and you'll see in a second what it is. I'm using some low angle light so that you can see better what's going on with this fuzz that's on the edge, even though I did do a, a shellac coat over the top before I routed it. So this isn't bad. Um, and what you see in my hand here is uh, my current favorite tool for this, uh, and that's just a small model maker's file. I've modified it so that you can see on the edge here, I've ground it down so there's no more teeth. I can, I can see some little grooves on there, but they're not cutting anymore. I've put a soft edge on it, so I'm only uh, able to cut with either face. Um, now, I have in the past used just a little block with some sandpaper, uh, lifted the grain up and then pulled across this direction on the top. But some tops are, the, the grain is just very strong and it will uh, it'll tear and I don't want to have that happen. I don't think that that's happening on this top, but this is a safer technique. Um, so I'm just going to grab the file and make a, a pass, making sure not to roll over to the inside at all. I'm just going to make a pass here. On the, to on the top. I'm also going to level this, this uh, purfling bottom. It's going to kind of work it both directions. And you can see that the grain lifted up here on the top a little bit. So now I'm going to take the file and with careful inward strokes only cut that off. Again, not allowing the file to rock back at all. Continue getting this all cleaned up so you don't want any of these little bits of pieces of fuzz affecting your glue up. I'd like to put this wedged tail graft into the bottom of my instrument here, and I want to do that before I put the binding on. At least I want to route for it before I put the binding on. Some people put the graft in first and then work to it with their bindings, and other people like me put the bindings on first and then fit the graft to it. Um, there's no right or wrong there, that's just a difference in process. Now uh, I'm going to do this by hand because I'm just kind of in a mood to, to do something by hand on this. But for those of you who like to do the machines and tooling, here's a real simple little uh, jig that you can make up. Uh, the graft is not always the same dimension. If you do the same graft every time, then you can jig up for that. But this actually has a little bit of adjustment in the, uh, in the arms so that I can make it line up straight. Uh, and there's two pieces of cork in here uh, so that when I clamp it onto the body, it not only doesn't damage it, but it's it's contacting at the two outer edges where the clamps are going to be instead of somewhere on the, the dome. Uh, so obviously I could put this in, line one side up making sure that it's uh, perfect, uh, take a corresponding block with a couple of pieces of cork on it, uh, put it on the side, clamp through both of these so that it's held securely, verify that the one side is exactly where I wanted it to be, uh, and then slide the piece in fit the pieces together, put screws in to make sure everything's secure, and then use a router with a, uh, a, a side bearing on it. This doesn't actually have a bearing, that's just a, a quarter inch bit, uh, and I'm going to ride on the shank of it if I use this jig, uh, the smooth shank. So I have to be very careful, I can't push on it really hard, uh, but that way I can get down to as thin a dimension as I need to get. Uh, but I'm going to go and do this uh, by hand. Uh, it's going to be hopefully an enjoyable experience for me as well as for you.
I've temporarily taped my binding onto the instrument so I can come down and measure, or at least eyeball, exactly to the center of where my tail graft is going to be so I can make an exact and perfect cut. The other end, since I'm doing the top first, is right in the neck hole. So I can just take the excess off any old way. Nothing about this is rocket science. Uh, this next stage is going to be all about trying to wrestle all of the different pieces into place while you've got the glue is setting and you're trying to keep things clean and get the tape on in the right locations and get all of the pieces to fit properly. Um, that's fine with uh, go ahead and using tight bond. I've done this with many instruments. It's great material. Um, in this case, I am going to be using hide glue. Now, I'm not evangelical about this. I want to use the appropriate glue for the appropriate task. I've come to the conclusion that hide works best for me when I'm trying to put bindings on. Not because it's stronger or it has better sonic properties or any of that sort of stuff, but I, for the life of me, can't get all four pieces on and nice and neat and clean and then take all the tape off and not find at least one place where the binding didn't sit down on the channel all the way or into the waist. God, that waist is a really tough place to get, uh, especially with just pieces of tape. And I can clamp them in place, but then you take the tape off that was covering it and oh, there's some sort of a problem. That's what's so great about the hide. If I wind up with something like that, then I can use steam. The steam will reconstitute the glue, I can put a new clamp on it, a new piece of tape, I can do something to it to save it and make it perfect. Now I've got this heated up right now along with the hide glue because I will be using that in the process. I'm going to be doing it a section at a time and so when I'm gluing up the next section I will use the steam to get the, the hot hide glue that was in the previous section to a state where it will actually bond. So let's go give this a try.
So I'm down to my final piece. I've got it dry fitted on here. And I'm going to have a tight joint here at the bottom. And then I've left it a little bit long here at the top. And I'm going to have to cut that off when I'm done taping this whole thing down. Uh, and I'm going to have to do it in real time while the glue is setting up and drying. And hopefully I won't cut it just a hair short. Just a hair long is a problem too because it holds the binding off the instrument. So this is going to be a bit of a delicate operation. As you can see, my black purfling broke as I was coming around the corner here. So I saved it and I'll be able to fit it in there. I uh, made it a little more complicated now. But I've got to make a nice tight joint right here. And I've found over the years here that one of the best tools is my front nippers here. Uh, I've got some damage on these. So I've got the black mark on there where the, where the holes are so I know where not to, to cut. But I can cut the end of this off pretty damn clean and make a perfect fit. So here's one of those little imperfections I was talking about earlier. The, uh, the purfling kind of pulled itself out. It was under a piece of tape here and I didn't get it quite all the way down into its slot. There's a small hollow space under there. Probably not enough that it, you know, when I do my scraping and sanding that it wouldn't uh, still look fine. But I want to get that down before I go scraping and discovering that I've lost all of my purfling. So I'm going to just take a couple of shots with the steamer to get the cool condensed steam out of it and dry this as best I can. You can see I very, very lightly heat the area with the steam. I'm going to take a hammer, straighten that veneer out a little bit, and press it down in. slipped right in. That's one of the advantages of using hide. Well, I lost the video of fitting the tail graft in, but that's pretty much just woodworking. So I'll let you guys figure that one out. Going with the tight bond for this one. See you next time.